Hi everyone, bon dia. <laughs> My name is uh, Nina Schwab. I'm the CEO of a small company called Tupelo Internet Services. And our product is the information and review platform Tupelo.com. Um, we are basically a competitor to TripAdvisor or Yelp, if you're fam familiar with those. Um, yeah, we were uh, founded in 2007 and started working with Kanban in 2010. So today I would like to talk about um, why we started, what we did to actually implement the system and how our um, different Canva boards looked like over the years, so the whole evolution. So first of all, why did we start with Kanban? At that point, um, we had the feeling that, you know, there were too many projects at the same time. It was not really obvious who was working on what and also the team, they, you know, they um, kind of felt like they're being overwhelmed and there was simply not enough transparency. So, yeah, we knew that at that point we had to do something about it. And also there was an internal dissatisfaction because um, some of the team members thought that we were concentrating too much on partner requests like, or customer requests that came from external and not really ever advancing with our product. So, yeah, what we, did we do? First of all, we started with what we had, had in place. So we kept all the roles, we kept all the responsibilities and also the processes and um, started to make things visible uh, to, in order to identify issues. Um, and that's you know, how we developed um, the, our first Kanban board. We introduced um, VIP limits um, in order to you know, see if there are any bottlenecks um, within the process. And also we started to um, have little stand-up meetings in the morning around 10 o'clock. We came together and updated each other on what we did the day before and what we were about to do that day and if there were any problems or you know, if someone needed help. And then we just let it evolve from there. So just to show you, this is um, the very first version of our Kanban board. As you can see here, we have um, four different queues. We have an input queue, development, test, and deployment. We also, right at the beginning, thought it was, would be a good idea to have classes of service. So as you can see here, we have uh, four classes. The yellow ones are the standard tickets, so you know, for standard work, for standard projects. Then we had um, red tickets with, um, those were the ones with a higher priority. And usually since a lot of that came from external partners, for example, it had a, a due date. So, uh, you know, just a time where we needed to be finished with everything. And then um, we had the intangible ones, the blue tickets. Those were tasks that had a, a low um, cost of delay, where we knew, okay, we had to do, the thing, but uh, it was not really urgent or something, but we had to do it at one point and usually those kind of tasks, um, the cost of delay is, you know, increasing over time. And then there's another one, this, um, I don't know if you can see it, it's um, the little expedite, ex expedite ticket, the green one. Those were like really, you know, urgent tasks that, I mean, didn't come along that often, but for example, if something really bad happened, like, okay, the site is down, so, you know, all hands on this, on this issue, um, that's when we, we um, issued this expedite. And it actually had an express lane above the whole workflow, and yeah, everyone was just, you know, focusing on the expedite to be finished at that point. Good. So, let's have a look at our version three. I actually skipped the, the second version because, you know, as we were like a small startup, we tried um, to experiment a lot and there were some things that worked and there were also some things that didn't work, so I didn't want to bother you with those. Um, and so this is uh, yeah, the third version and as you can see, it's quite complex already. So to make it a little bit easier, easier or more visual. 
Um, it's a so-called two-tiered Kanban board. So you have on the sides, you have the, the columns or queues where the MMF, the minimum marketable features are moving. So they would be pulled into progress with a VIP limit of three. And then at that point, one of the team members uh, would, you know, take a look at the, at the MMF and split it up into smaller work items. And those work items would go through the whole workflow that you can see here. You know, so it would be broken down into smaller tickets. And then you hear also you have uh, in progress um, column, uh, a column called done that just meant, okay, I'm finished with the analysis. And then it was moved, um, it was just checked if that's really, cor uh, really correct. And then it was moved to work with this kind of a, a second input queue. Because you, from there you could, or buffer, you, from there you could pull it into the development stage. So let's take a look. Something else I should mention here is um, the little thing at the bottom. This is uh, our feedback loop, or that's at least how we called it. This is um, for a task where we, you know, once the MMF was going into validation, where we could not really say, is this now done, or, um, you know, do we need to do anything else? This was uh, uh, the case, for example, for external requests, because I think you can, I might know that sometimes you think you know what the customer wants and then you develop it and then in the end you find out, ah, oh, no, that's not really, you know, everything, there should be something more. And that's why we moved them into the feedback loop and to the front and marked them with a, with a um, red magnet in order to indicate this one is blocked. We need to get some feedback from the partner. And once we got the feedback, we actually had a, a green magnet on that so that it could be pulled within the whole process again. You know, like once a slot would open and in progress, the team member that wanted to work on it would pull it into the, into the open slot and then the whole thing starts again. Usually that didn't take that long, you know, not, not like before because you already had worked on it and you already knew what, can, you, know, what you were about to do with it. So, yeah. And also, I mean, I mentioned it before as well, maybe you've seen that we kind of tried to color code everything a little bit with, uh, with colorful magnets. Um, yeah, we have, um, th those magnets have different meanings and also David mentioned it earlier in his presentation. For example, here in, in progress, we just made it really clear there are only three black magnets, so there are only three um, slots available for this ticket. You can see that in progress and also in development, um, just to kind of visual, visual support it, that there, was only, there can only be three tickets in when there is a working progress limit of three. And another thing, um, I mentioned already the, the um, green and uh, red, magnets, but we also had other feedback magnets, the blue one, which meant that s someone is w waiting for internal feedback. Because blue, you know, our logo was blue, so we kind of thought that's, you know, a good thing to mark it with a blue magnet so that the team knows, okay, someone needs feedback on, on the, in the validation step, for example. And then we had a um, yellow uh, magnet that only meant that um, we needed feedback from, with this ticket for example, we needed feedback from um, companies that were working for, for us, like we outsourced some stuff, especially in <coughs> the ops uh, area, so this just indicates, okay, this cannot be pulled into development unless we have the, the feedback and then we would, would remove the, the magnet. And one thing I forgot to mention, I mean, as you can see, of course, the little avatars, the little South Park kind of uh, um, <laughs> people, they are the team members that were working on it. And we had, um, we had actually two sizes of them. The um, bigger one just indicates that 
this is like the main task for the person working on it, but then you also have the smaller ones that just meant that someone else is helping that person in order to, you know, get this uh, faster through the process. Okay, so, and of course, um, we did not only have a development department, but we also has had other departments like community management and marketing. Um, this board is actually from 2012, I guess. Um, so at that point, um, it was a little bit difficult for us to kind of, you know, come up with a, with a solution for this um, department because there were not a lot of implementations um, in other departments than development. Um, so we kind of had to, you know, try things out and just see what um, what sticks and also what works. Um, so. It's also quite complex because we try to get everything in there. Um, we have uh, different swim lanes here. We have uh, um, at the at the at the top we have uh, a swim lane that's you know for the different areas within the department. So you have community management, marketing, PR, events and campaigns, and we kind of discussed that a lot. Um, and we, at the beginning, we were not really able to kind of distinguish uh, different steps within this whole process. So what we did, we um, introduced uh, a progress uh, bar at here at the top. So that meant, I think David, you mentioned it earlier as well, um, that meant that, um, for example, if the ticket is in this area, you know, it's zero percent and um, you move it um, to the other side once it's finished with a hundred. So you can kind of see, you know, those tickets are, you know, around 50% done. Um, yeah, and you know, if you stay here, you can also see um, he here we have the MMFs and the work items together. So um, er like all the small um, um, tickets that are on the big item um, are related to the, the whole project. Like, are, um, you know, are together with the MMF and also there are numbers on it in order to, you know, make sure that nothing gets lost on the way. So what else? Then we have a swim lane for HR, which was also part of, of this department in a way. And then at the bottom, maybe that's also interesting, we had, uh, you know, some partner project where the community management and marketing was also involved. So we had, a, had some processes at the beginning and then there's this little red box with development. Just th this is meant only that there was a um, kind of connection to the development board. So once the ticket was pulled into, the, into this little box, there would be another ticket created in the development process there would be another ticket that got into the input queue on the development board. The, for ex an example would be they had a campaign or something and um, some feature within Tupalo had to be kind of adjusted for it or even implemented and that's how you know they kind of um, prepared it and then once something had to be released then they said okay we're ready now you can release the, the feature and yeah, then we did that. Okay, what else? Um, also here in the, on the left hand side, we have some area which is not included in the process. This is simply for tasks that are recurring because we figured out there, especially in those um, de um, departments, there are a lot of tasks that are like recurring like every day or once in a week that are not going through this process that are like, you know, newsletters for example. You do this all the time and or you sometimes, you know, do something for it in between. So we said, okay, we also wanted to have that on the board, like really small tasks, but we wanted to see that someone was actually taking care of it. So we also put it here just to have it on the board. So let's talk a little bit out of uh, our meeting culture. 
there were actually some changes I'm, I think you see right at the beginning. We uh, didn't have stand-up meetings, we didn't have replenishment retrospective or estimation meetings, but of course we had spec meetings. That changed uh, in October 2010 when we implemented um, our Kanban system. So we, as I said before, we introduced the stand-up meetings, um, spec meetings uh, we left like before. We had a replenishment meeting because we were really motivated and we thought, okay, we're going to do this like once per week. Um, and the same with retrospective meetings. And we did a lot of uh, experiments, I would say, with the uh, estimation. So we tried to kind of find a way to actually do it and um, yeah, try different things. But as you can, say, uh, can see in May 2011, um, yeah, we, we skipped the estimation meetings. So why would, it, why would we do this? Um, we figured out over the time that, you know, it's a lot of work to actually <coughs> estimate and in a lot of cases the estimation at the end were not really, was not really correct. So, um, yeah, this was a huge overhead and um, a solution that we um, created for us for it was that we said, okay, we try. Once we um, split up the MMF into work items, we try to have every little work item like be a work for a day, for example, in order to get an idea, okay, if there are like five work items of this MMF, um, it would take five days to complete it. So that was good enough. I know this is a sensitive topic sometimes. So <laughs> um, yeah, it worked for us at least. So yeah, and um, more or less everything stayed the same. We tried to simple, simplify uh, a lot of things. We said, okay, respective meeting, um, retrospective uh, meetings. Let's do this uh, monthly, or if you feel like you know, there's uh, we need to do it, and then um, the replenishment meetings we said, okay, let's do this on demand. Because, um, you know, we figured out sometimes, um, you know, you have a replenish meeting and there's nothing to replenish. And uh, other times um, you don't have a replenishment meeting and you have to replenish the queue. So that's why, like, okay, it's not, you know, it's a little bit a waste of time if we then have a meeting, if, you know, we do it otherwise. So we, we um, said, okay, let's do the replenishment meetings um, on demand. So the rest um, stay the same. So yeah, so now we are in September 2017, like six years later, a lot of things have happened <laughs> until then. Um, yeah, we do still do stand-up meetings, but in a little bit uh, a different way. That's why I, uh, mentioned every day here. I will come to that a little bit later and explain what, I'm, what I mean with this. Um, yeah, and all the rest um, stayed the same and also retrospective is now on, dema uh, on demand. Okay, so yeah, what, what did we achieve with Kanban? We achieved a lot. It was really, for us, it was a really, really good experience. Um, we created more transparency and also a lot of more communication because we came together to discuss the things and like everyone was on the same page. So this, that was really, really good. That was a huge step for us. Um, and also the, the prioritization was now clearer because we had it now visual. We had the classes of service that indicate, okay, what kind of project is that now? And also, um, due to the order in the, in, in the input queue, you could kind of say, okay, the first one in the input queue, they're moving upwards. The first one there is the most important task that we should work on our project. So this one is the next one that goes into the workflow. Yeah, and of course, since we, we uh, focused, uh, had the, the WIP limits, the work in progress limits, we focused on only a few things and were able to deliver faster. And yeah, that made a, a big impact. And also um, it facilitated um, pair programming. So the guys 
and girls would uh, work to, together more often and yeah, it's also a good thing that we achieved by actually implementing it. So, yeah, and what happened after that? Um, yeah, we had uh, a lot of changes uh, within our company. We had also to restructure the company a little bit. Um, as you might know, in this area that we were working on, you know, there's a lot of competition. Also, because, you know, Facebook and Google, everyone is doing reviews now, Every, everyone is doing, like, providing information on businesses and stuff like that. So that also, of course, had an impact on our revenue and also on the way that we were working. And, yeah, so um, we had to do a little pivot. So we, at the beginning, we focused a lot on the consumer side, so we focused a lot on the community management. And so we had a lot of project in that area. And at some point we had to decide, okay, what we're gonna do um, and figured out it would be better to kind of move a little to the uh, business to business side and also like have, con have the, the business as our direct customers and also work together with partners that actually provide products for those businesses in order to create some revenue and not be like, uh, yeah, not, yeah, not to have only the, the possibility to gain revenue over advertisements and stuff like that, because that was before that, you know, through the traffic and people on the site, that was uh, one of the, our pillars, how we generated uh, revenue. So, yeah, and the other thing, so a lot of things, as I said, changed, and also, there, like some of our, um, we had a little shift in, in within the team as well, because some of our, um, employees or team members, they decided they wanted to do something on their own or they wanted to move abroad for some time. So also the size of the team kind of um, yeah, changed a little bit. So, and we thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of rethink everything a little bit. And uh, we figured out that we wanted to be a little bit more flexible. We also started to uh, integrate remote work um, into the business, so we had at the beginning we had uh, um, remote working Wednesdays, for example, where everyone could work at home or at a cafe or whatever. And then afterwards, also um, we had some team members that actually worked at at um, you know a different part of the world. So um, so that was one thing, and also um, we figured out that um, within the team there were some you know. Um, it would be good if we um, have uh, asynchronous team schedules, so not um, that uh, the people have to be in the office from 9 to 5, but they can shift that a little bit to one side or the other. So, yeah, we did a lot of experimentation with that, um, but, um, yeah, what came out of it, um, it was, uh, everything was a, that was a good idea to kind of experiment with this, but um, we had, of course, we had to adjust uh, the Kanban system because we had this physical board, and not everyone was in, in the office like at the same time anymore. So we had to kind of adjust to it. And so, yeah, we decided to actually try an online tool. Um, I mean, I, I had, been, have been, had been working with, with online tools before because I was kind of documenting everything that was going on on the f physical board within um, different um, tools that, I, that we had. So to um, kind of document what was happening over the, um, the month. And um, yeah, so let's have a look how um, our online tool, tool looks like at the moment. It might not be something that you would expect from a Kanban board, so let's take a look. I don't know if you can see it. It's, I think the quality is not that good. I want to zoom in a little. So this is uh, what we are working with at the moment. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a simplified version of what we have in place um, because I, you know, I wanted to explain what's going on here and I know it's not like uh, the design that we used to work with before, but uh, it's everything is there. Like every feature that we had on the physical board um, is there. So let me just quickly explain to you what's happening. Um, 
So we have uh, the queues with the work items here. So we have the, the MMF um, and the broken down tasks. Then we still have the classes of service. Um, I had um, these little arrows in the colors that we used before so that you can see what's going on there. Um, so the priority tickets are also um, red or like pinkish. Um, and also have a deadline, as you can see here, the date of today. Then we have uh, the standard tic tickets with a priority two. And then um, the expedite right below it. This task is already done um, in silver. And you might wonder, OK, but this is, you know, like a, it looks a little bit like a task list. So where are the working progress limits and stuff like that? Um, let me show you. Um, the um, doing column here is uh, actually has a working progress limit of three. But as you can see, there are four tasks in this, in, this, in this step. So what's happening here, as you can see there, this task was blocked, you know, and that therefore um, we, we, we let it stay here and um, pulled another task into the doing. And that's when the task um, is grayed out so that you can see, OK, there's still just three um, tasks in, in, in progress at the moment. But this one is waiting to be unplugged. And once um, here, there's a, a space here, we remove the, and, and we have the information or the, the bottleneck or whatever it is that blocked the task will be removed. And then it gets back into, into the, in the in progress. And also, you still see, um, you know, who's working on what. So you have a little icons or pictures of the team members, just to make it, make it simple. I just included uh, myself and Clemens so that it's easier for you to see that. Um, and we have um, these little buttons. Like, th those show um, that there is a conversation or a talk going on. So you can see, for example, with the task 1.3, there have been two conversations. And actually, you can click on it and look what was being discussed. Yeah, and you have five, two, and one with the rest of the tickets. And then there's another feature, which is, which is also very, really helpful for the team. This, it's uh, this little star on the side. It just means, OK, I need help with this. Can you please uh, join in? Um, and um, we can talk about it. And as you can see, Clemens and I really discussed some things. So we have five talks in there at the moment. Yeah, and you might be wondering, okay, but where are the MMFs? So the MMFs uh, are stored into, in our uh, backlog, and that's also where the analysis is happening. As you can see, we have uh, currently 10 MMFs in the, uh, in the backlog, and the first three of them are already um, discussed, already analyzed, and um, yeah, once, um, one MMF is going through the whole process and everything is done. This is marked as done as well. And um, it will be archived. And then we take another MMF and analyze it. And then it goes into the whole process. And all this, just so you know, all this is happening uh, automatically. So once a team member is clicking on something in here, it's, it got synced to there and also moves the tasks from to do, doing, done. So this is also happening uh, automatically. And you can see, for example, um, all the, once you analyze uh, the MMF um, in the backlog, you would, you would mark it with MMF, then it would go into the to do column. And then um, once you click on it, it's going to go into doing automatically and once you have finished everything you click again and then it's going to be in the uh, in the done uh, column and it's also represented on within the backlog so this is like the, the same system and it's syncing in both directions 
then you wonder maybe, okay, but what about the stand-up? You're not there anymore. You're not like with everyone together in one room and you're not having this morning uh, talk about you know, what you did over the day. So we also found a solution for this. So we have, a, a, for every day we have a digest which kind of sums up everything that was happening on this board also automatically. So it's generated by the system and you can see here, okay, what are the things that the, the team committed to? For example, here you see, okay, Nina committed to task 2.2, for example, then uh, who focused on what? You can also see that I focused on task, uh, on task uh, 3.2. Focusing just means, okay, this is something that I want to look into. I'm not, I don't, I don't know yet if I'm gonna work on this, but I wanted to, you know, check, check, check it out or like see what I can do. Um, and the commit is more like, okay, I'm actually going to work on it just to explain the difference between the two. Yeah, and then you see um, what the, the colleagues worked on and um, what I did work on just to remind yourself, okay, what did you do yesterday? Oh, okay, no, those are the things that, um, you know, I wanted to start working again. And then also like just as a summary, those are the to-dos that the team completed. So the team completed three to-dos, for example. Yeah, that was just a, a sneak peek of what we're doing now. Um, yeah, we developed the system ourselves because we wanted to have something that's also integrated in uh, the whole process within Tupelo to kind of connect everything together, to have all the information on the business in one tool. And so it's directly connected to the database and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what we're using now. And I mean, I, yeah. I could do, I guess I could do a whole presentation on what else um, or what other features we have. I just wanted to show you that, that you know, there are other ways to kind of um, visualize it. Um, and as I said, this is only like very basic, uh, only to, to show you. So um, our, our board that we are using is way more complex than that. Good. So, yeah, so I think that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, if you have questions, let me know. I mean, I don't know if you have time. Otherwise, you can also find me um, during the break or taking pictures. Yes. How do you want to tool? I think that you can retrieve metrics about that. The question is, are you doing it? Are you reviewing the metrics in order to learn from them? Um, we do it, yeah, we do it, but it's not like, um, you know, it's not like a really like a dashboard or something, but it's like a list of um, things that happen, like w a little bit similar to what uh, you saw in the digest. It's something that I can extract and can work with it to kind of um, do some, you know, think about what's, what's happening, see the cycle times and stuff like that, so, yeah. yeah. Yes? Yeah, usually within the team, like, I mean, we're a small company, so like that meant, uh, you know, all the people that are involved in with, with roles um, that are important for replenishment would be in that meeting before, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yes. The genius on the board really came from the team, or was something that was more proportional uh, to that? The, the changes? The, yeah. yeah, the evolution of the of the boards. Yeah, because they wanted more vision on yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, within the retrospective meetings, um, we also, you know, discussed this kind of things, and of course, we gathered the feedback, what the team thought it wasn't a problem or something, and then we thought about, okay, how can we actually you know, find a solution for it. So that was a team kind of thing, yeah. So like, like as I said, small company, startup spirit, and we try to, you know, have as much feedback from the team in order to change. Because I mean, they, you know, they were working on those things, so they kind of have, have to have um, some kind of impact in, in all the changes. Yes, please. I was wondering, you said that you stopped using estimates. Yes. Data. So, if you don't have the data and you're not estimating, 
I'm wondering how, do, how does that work? Without data, how can you forecast, for example? Mm -hmm. Do you mean like e estimates in terms of okay what he was uh, asking, yeah. like cycle time and stuff, or do you mean um, um, estimate. estimate how long it will take? Yeah. I mean we did that, and in the in the you know I was documenting everything and kind of you know um, analyzed the data, and then um, of course I kind of knew, but. Um, the real estimation actually happened in the process of, of the analysis that the team was doing. When they said, okay, we want to we wanna look at the work, you know, what, what has to be done to kind of finish the, the MMF, and that's like the real estimation that's taking place. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, regarding the estimation, how much do you have to do to do with the estimations and the focus on delivery? The you uh, faster, the more quality and the engineers were satisfied, or this actually yeah. still is dragging down the something you need to test yeah, I mean, I have to say, we really tried really hard with this, you know. We really tried a lot of different, uh, you know, possibilities, but in the end, when we got rid of it, um, it was a huge release because, like, we really fo were focusing more on the thing that had to be done than on, like, ha having the overhead of actually getting together, estimating it, and then, you know, this discussion going on. And, like, usually our estimation meetings were quite long, so. Last question, how did the external partners react to this? So because you mentioned you had some external partners. Yeah. Um, actually, they didn't really recognize that there were some changes. Because we kind of, you know, we knew, OK, we, we, we just um, kind of uh, just tried to give them, if we had to give them a date, yeah, then we tried to have like a real, real big buffer in between. And usually what we said, we, we did not really commit to the date because we said, okay, listen, we have to analyze it first. Uh, we cannot tell you now, you know, we have to do the work before we actually can tell you uh, when we're going to be finished. If I tell you now this is finished then and then, it, the possibility is really, really high that it's not going to happen. And yeah, that, that also would create uh, you know troubles again. So that's not really worth it. Yes. In your presentation, you showed in, uh, version one and three. Mm -hmm. You did a lot of testing in version three. Yes. Can you give just an example of something that didn't work into the version three. Yeah. For example, I mean, it wasn't that it didn't work, but it was not really. Having a, it was not like a solution. What we we had before was um, something called we called it the six pack. Um, that, that's where we try to have, um, for example, bulks of tasks that were mixed together in a specific way. So we said, okay, we should have uh, at least because you know of the dissatisfaction that we're doing a lot of partner stuff. We need to kind of find a kind. We need to find a kind of balance there, and so we pack together a six pack with different kind of tickets and make sure that, for example, feature developments were also in there next to the partner stuff, not only partner stuff. And also, you know, like we adjusted the communication to the partner with this. Um, it was, I mean, yeah, it was, it kind of worked, but it was not perfect, and we figured out, okay when we, you know, working with the system and also had the new Kanban board or the ideas for the new Kanban board, we, you know, thought that maybe that's a better way to do it then. And also, but kept it in mind that we had to kind of find a balance and usually, you know, um, we, you could see that then in, within the input queue, the way how we arrange the ticket, for example. Yes? Have the same benefits with the online tools that you have when the team was uh, all together in the office? The, the well organized. Uh, yes, um, I think we do have a lot of those benefits. Of course, there are challenges with it. Yeah, I'm, that's for sure. But um, you know, we are in the process of kind of you know we just started with it recently, and when we are in the process to improve it. So with every release that we're doing, uh, it's getting better and better. And um, yeah, I mean, we're almost close to you know where we were before. But of course, if the team is not at in one place, it's always a challenge. And also, the the culture, you know, the um, company culture has to change a lot. And yeah, that's what we were working on in the past uh, couple of months. 
good? Okay, then thank you very much. <laughs>